The plume had not yet dispersed from Saturday's launch of SpaceX's Starship vehicle on its second test flight when the debates began about how to grade the outcome. Many considered a failure, but there are also many who praised the launch as a great success. Despite the differing opinions, deep down, we all see the second launch as a significant step forward. Starship showcased its remarkable capabilities, and that's something undeniable. But what is clear is that while SpaceX has made progress since that first flight, they still have many challenges to address. So, what does SpaceX need to upgrade to achieve the orbital goal in the next launch? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. At the end of the second Starship launch, the only thing remaining intact is the launch pad. We can see it as a tremendous improvement compared to before, and they won't need too much time to prepare for the next launch. However, Starship still has many technical issues that can be considered partially responsible for the launch failure and need resolution. This is what rocket enthusiasts are most concerned about right now. The question posed here is, what does SpaceX need to address for Starship in the next launch? The first issue they need to tackle is the problem with the Raptor engines. The engines are the lifeblood of the rocket. Any malfunction in the engines can pose a danger to the entire rocket. Even in crewed missions, it could lead to a catastrophic outcome. In the second launch, although the Raptor engines performed brilliantly in the initial two minutes, some engines encountered issues during the booster separation and relight phase. This could be attributed to engine-specific problems or issues within the fuel delivery system. Meanwhile, the fuel supply system is also complex, and if interrupted, it will immediately cause abnormalities in the engine ignition process. However, no visible damage to the Super Heavy was observed, suggesting that the primary issue might lie in the rocket's propulsion system. Starship boasts the world's most complex propulsion system, which, while advantageous for SpaceX, also introduces huge challenges. The intricate nature of the system may lead to underlying issues that SpaceX needs to reevaluate. There is also another theory that the booster explosion could be due to thermal overload. This can completely happen. The hot staging mechanism was initially designed to shield the top of the booster from the heat generated during the ignition of the second stage. Despite being constructed from stainless steel, the same material as the rocket fuselage and possessing identical thermal tolerances, the hot staging structure proved incapable of withstanding the collective force and thermal intensity produced by the six Raptors. This resulted in the hot staging becoming excessively heated, transferring thermal stress to the fuel tank and ultimately causing the tank to detonate. SpaceX should be incorporating thermal protection either to the hot staging dome or to the upper section of the methane fuel tank. This additional layer of thermal shielding aims to enhance the resilience of the hot staging mechanism and prevent the transmission of thermal stress to critical components like the fuel tank. The next thing that SpaceX needs to re-examine is the remote connectivity software on Starship. It seems that the flight termination system, FTS, on the ship was activated automatically or triggered due to the loss of a communications link, which couldn't be re-established in time. If the issue of communications and telemetry link breakage hadn't occurred, Starship would have continued along its intended trajectory. This scenario aligns with the logistical precautionary measures in place for flying this highly experimental giant across continents. In today's technological landscape, establishing a two-way communication link between a flying vehicle and ground control is technologically straightforward, as evidenced by airliners and many rockets. The ship itself possesses the capability to discern whether ground control can still track it. In the context of high-risk flights, such as this experimental mission, it is not only prudent but often required to include communication link loss as one of the triggers for the Autonomous Flight Termination System, or AFTS, to activate. Consider the implausibility of allowing the ship to autonomously continue its trajectory to Hawaii for over 20 minutes without ground control being aware of its location, speed, engine conditions, and other critical parameters. It is truly a horrifying prospect. Although the AFTS system was successfully activated, the goal SpaceX aims for is not flights using this system. They need to reevaluate the GPS connectivity on each starship to ensure continuous communication during the flight. Another potential issue that could upset the balance of the booster and Starship is the possibility of fuel leaks. As the booster began its return, the flashing lights and signs of engine distress were accompanied by indications. This could be attributed to fuel leaks or, in a more severe scenario, the ingestion of gas. In the rocket engine, the turbo pump is responsible for ensuring the proper flow of fuel and oxidizer into the combustion chamber at the necessary pressure to generate sufficient thrust. 
When the pressure inside the Raptor's methane turbo pump is higher than the level set by SpaceX for the combustion process, more fuel than necessary may leak, leading to engine shutdown. Continuing the Starship's upper stage flight after separation, approximately three minutes in, the oxygen concentration began to significantly decrease, causing an imbalance between oxidizer and fuel components. This was visually confirmed by a distinct stream of the air emanating from the spacecraft, signaling a deviation from the expected trajectory. The lack of control over the diminishing oxygen levels and the subsequent incident led to an uncontrolled re-entry of Starship, scattering debris over the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX will undoubtedly need to reinforce the fuel tanks within the rocket's fuselage and identify the root cause contributing to oxygen depletion. Understanding and mitigating these challenges will be pivotal for the continued development and success of SpaceX's ambitious Starship program. To be honest, some say that this launch is SpaceX's second failure, and it might make their rocket development journey challenging. But that's a misconception. Not only did they achieve significant progress, but they have become an unstoppable force in pushing boundaries. SpaceX is in a financial position to oversee the Starship development until completion. Moreover, their position to receive independent funding from NASA. Elon Musk, consistently among the world's wealthiest, can contribute substantial funding to Starship's development. The days of SpaceX struggling for financial survival are long gone. Even when a Starship faces a setback in development, no one seriously questions whether SpaceX can continue. The current production system can churn out more vehicles in one or two months, ensuring that test programs are not significantly delayed due to malfunctions. There's always the next prototype to be completed. It seems like SpaceX can overcome anything, even if the future development of Starship faces many challenges. Until it successfully reaches orbit, I predict it will be the third Starship launch. Then, government officials, especially NASA, will be shocked. The necessity of the Space Launch System, or SLS, will be called into question. If Starship can reach orbit with enough payload capacity, even without reusing the Super Heavy booster or returning, landing, and reusing Starship, it will still be a much more cost-effective heavy lift vehicle compared to the SLS. And if Starship achieves orbit, successfully recovers its Super Heavy booster, and safely returns and lands, SLS will become a peculiar historical footnote, expensive, flying a few times, and then retiring. Don't dwell too much on the past mistakes. Instead, look towards a promising future. The third launch will soon be coming, and it may reach orbit. The company then needs to demonstrate cryogenic propellant transfer in orbit and the ability to launch starships on a regular rapid cadence to fill up a propellant tank in low Earth orbit that would then fuel the lunar lander starship for its mission to the moon. At Friday's committee meeting, Lakeisha Hawkins, Assistant Deputy Assistant Administrator in NASA's Moon to Mars Program Office, said the agency expected the total number of launches for each Starship HLS emission to be in the high teens, far higher than what SpaceX had previously stated. Musk, back in 2021, said he believed no more than eight launches of tanker Starships would be required, and could be as little as four. Those launches, she said, would take place on a six-day rotation, involving both the Starbase launch site at Boca Chica as well as a new Starship launch pad SpaceX is building at Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. While SpaceX has shown the ability to launch Falcon 9 rockets frequently, it carried out two such launches over the weekend just before and after the Starship launch. That cadence came after only many years of work by SpaceX. Artemis 3 is currently a little more than two years away. Free, at the Huntsville conference, said he was looking ahead to the upcoming Starship test flight, sometimes designated OFT-2 for orbital flight test 2. He said, we need that to be successful to get this that much farther down the road. But like those debates from armchair analysts online after Saturday's launch, he did not define what he considered it meant for the launch to be successful. In a social media post after the launch, he wrote, looking forward to seeing what can be learned from this test that moves us closer to the next milestone. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.